Hoffman, sir. Are you Ernest Hayden? Yes, I am. Oh, good afternoon. This is Judge Middleton. We're going to do a court proceeding, and I'm going to ask you to take off your hat and treat it as though it were in court proceeding. Uh, why don't you guys come up and have a seat? In this case, it is a civil infraction formal hearing, file number 241179-ON. O stands for ordinance. Uh, this is a property. On June 27th, the defendant was issued a citation for multiple violations of the International Property Maintenance Code. The officers executed a search warrant on this property, and that was an administrative search warrant and found what appeared to be a number of violations. There was apparently, I don't know if there was an informal hearing or simply asked for a formal hearing right off the bat. Anyway, an informal hearing with the magistrate, the formal hearing is front of me. So Officer Kuhlman is sworn. Uh, Mr. Kuhlman, how did you come to issue this citation? Thank you, Your Honor. This again stems from complaints from a neighboring property owner in regards to the biggest complaint this time was a noisy generator running 24 seven, um, along with other debris and a new structure that had been built that I had no record of a permit for. Uh, so based on that, I did secure an administrative search warrant. Uh, we did respond um, on June 27th of 2024 with that administrative search warrant. Uh, Mr. Jelinek was not present. Um, I believe the lady that's sitting to his right was the person that was there when we arrived. She indicated that she called him because he was only a couple miles down the road helping somebody work on a vehicle. However, Mr. Jelinek never showed up during the time of this search. Uh, I have submitted to the courts 45 pictures, um, which will show uh, various unlicensed vehicle junk litter um, laying around. But again, what's more problematic with this one is uh, they were running a generator. According to American Electric Power, they've been without power at this location since April of 2024. Um, running generators with extension cords running into the house, all over the house, um, down through the ground to other outbuildings, and which are creating, you know, some circuit overloads, I can only imagine. Uh, the generator, we actually shut it off while we were standing there because the fumes were making us such uh, nauseation because of the, the poor um, fumes that were being let off. Uh, we did do a search of the residence. Um, there's other issues inside the residence, like there's a uh, open flame heater that's sitting about one foot away from a bed that's got you know bedding on it. Um, just all kinds of international property maintenance code violations along with junk and litter. One of the other concerning things, and this one that's kind of hitting home with me, Your Honor, uh, he has yet built another illegal structure on there that had absolutely no windows in it whatsoever, only had one entry door in it. A gentleman was living in there, was there at the time of our inspection. On the other side of the wall from the entry door was a whole bank of automotive batteries that were being charged by a generator. Um, if those batteries would fail and catch that wall on fire, there's no way anybody could have got out of that, that illegal structure. Um, again, this brings back some pretty- Well, simple. let's talk about this. Two little girls, two children were killed in a fire on this property from an illegal structure. Correct. Uh, so I have about zero sympathy for your current circumstance. In fact, I'm surprised you didn't get charged with a crime. Uh, in fact, I expected you would be charged with some sort of crime for that. But as far as I can tell, you weren't. Um, That's the hard thing for me, Your Honor, because you specifically from the bench told him that he could not have people living in substandard buildings. And as a result of that, two children lost their lives. Um, you and I, I think have lived in this county all our lives and you don't forget a thing. Um, if you remember back in the eighties, uh, I used to be a, a firefighter and an EMT and we had a call for a structure fire. And as soon as I pulled out of my driveway, I could see the flames. And unfortunately, four children perished in that fire. 
And as you recall, I was also the funeral director in that community at the time. So I dealt with two families that lost four children due to a fire that probably should not have happened. And that this case here brings back some pretty significant memories for me from back in the 80s. Um, and obviously, my opinion. Well, right, let's screen share here. Um, so we can go through these one by one. The 45 pictures that you took were taken when? They were taken um, on the date of the inspection, which is the June 27th, 2024. Right. And are they fair and accurate pictures of what you saw that day? They are, Your Honor. All right. On the screen, we see uh, what's... It's, so this is the interior of the home. They've got a light hanging on the wall that's got a wire going down to the floor, uh, plugged into an extension cord that yeah, as, the, as the pictures progress, you'll see several extension cords running all through this home. All right, I'm going to admit the four to five photographs all collectively as exhibit one for this hearing. They're fair and accurate representations of what was taken that day. All right, let's see the, go to the next picture. I'm gonna have to click on these one by one. All right, here's uh, which is number page number six of your report. Uh, what are we seeing in this picture? So again, that's that's in, in the interior of the dwelling. You can see there's all kinds of extension cords laying on the floor, going various directions. Uh, one of the, the things that's plugged into those extension cords is the air conditioner that's at the upper left-hand corner of that photograph. Uh, this is listed as page number seven of your report. What are we seeing here? More of the same. Again, more of the same. The extension cords running all over, extension cords plugged into extension well, cords. Well, all the surfaces we see on the walls and floor are wood. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Oh, boy. Uh, this is number eight of your report. So this is the open flame combustible uh, heating device that's in that room. Number one, it's it's secured to a wooden wall, but if you can see the bedding and stuff is like within a foot of that open flame. And that's not code compliant. They wouldn't let somebody install something like that. You're correct, Your Honor. Was it on? No, it wasn't. It was pretty warm that day when we were. Holy smokes. Are we trying to start a fire? Holy moly. Uh, all right, this next one would be page nine, it's sideways. No, it's not. I guess a light fixture in the closet. Right, so this is again, a wooden shake wall covering. They've got an extension cord going up wrapped around a light fixture. One of the light fixtures does not have any uh, bulb in it. So somebody going in dark, sticks their finger in the wrong spot, they're gonna get electric shock from an exposed electrical connection. Uh, page number 10. Um, that was at the bottom of the stairway, as I indicated, American Electric Power said they had not had any power to this residence since April of 2024. Um, and it was due to, they had to redo their whole electrical service because it was so outdated. Uh, so that was sitting there. I can only make an assumption that they were going to attempt to upgrade the electrical, but it's sitting inside the house, not outside being installed. That's not hooked up to anything. It's just sitting there. Correct. Page 11. Um, this is just one of the rooms in the interior of the house. Again, um, definitely, I mean, showing occupancy. Um, there was the female subject that was there. I was told that she was the only one in the residence at the time. Unfortunately, um, I did have a guy hiding up in the second story of the house that uh, subsequently had a warrant out of the state of Georgia. So he was arrested as well. So this is just showing the interior of the house that it is being occupied. Page number, uh, page number 12. Again, electrical cord running throughout the house. Thirteen. That is two generators that are sitting outside the dwelling. The one in the back 
ground was not in operation at the time. The one in the front was um, operating and giving off some, some very foul smells. So the smaller one in the front looks like a 2,000 watt or 3,000 3, watt? 3,000, your honor. And how big was the other one? Uh, that I do not know. I will indicate to you that there's a picture further back in my report. I went back the next day to the neighboring property just to see if they were still running generators after we placarded them as unsafe for human habitation. And in fact, those two generators were not in operation, but there was another brand new generator sitting in its place. Boy, here's another one. Uh, this would be page 14. I'm not even sure what I'm looking at. Um, that's part of the electrical wiring and the what's that? Um, the cable TV wiring and the uh, gas supply. That big that's the gas supply in the middle of that picture. Yes, your honor. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> picture of a burning barrel. Obviously, you can see there's a plastic garbage bag in it. You can see remnants of cans and stuff that are being burnt. So again, uh, violation of the Michigan state law for burning. When I was young, I worked about three summers as a garbage man on the back of a garbage truck. And one of the things we had to pick up was burn barrels. <clears throat> and when those were full of ashes and they were wet, they were heavier than hell. And I had a very hard time lifting them up to the back of the truck, but I was much younger then. All right, and this is another photograph of the illegal structure. That is correct, Your Honor, with the entry door and the Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Unit. Holy smokes. This is just absolute blatant disregard of the zoning enforcement rules in Constantine Township. Um, none of this was permitted. That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and that's the inside of this structure. And this number 32. Yes. So 32 is again the outside view and I've highlighted tags in yellow. So I highlighted and pointed to the entry door that's there and then pictures will show it later. Just inside that wall between those two doors is where there is um, eight 12 volt batteries that are being charged by a generator. So as I previously- what, what is the black thing there? Is that a refrigerator? <clears throat> uh, I think you're one step ahead of me. Oh, take a look at what's on the screen. Oh, yeah, that's 33. So <clears throat> yes, that's a refrigerator in there. And again, an extension cord running through the wall, um, powering different devices. And there's some sort of an inverter and uh, correct other battery packs. That would be 34, 35. 35 is the sleeping area of this illegal structure. On top of not having any windows, I mean, there's a lot of clutter in there that if there ever was a fire, I think this gentleman would have had a very difficult time getting out alive. Well, remember, we said we remember everything, the fire down in Modville where the man was, that little place burned up uh, I don't think he was killed. I think the place burned to the structure, burned to the ground. Here is uh, fresh food and cigarettes. <clears throat> Monster. <clears throat> that would be uh, 37. Correct, Your Honor. 38. Uh, air conditioner in the wall, and then again, extension cords that are running other devices. Um, How they expect to run all this on a generator? Can't even industrial. Uh, and then here's some another view of the property with like construction equipment outside. This is the same structure we're talking about. You're on, it's just a different view of it. That's 39. 40 is the batteries you were referring to? Yes. Which again, if you look to the very right, you can see the door open on the other part of that structure. So if that wall caught on fire, it would be, I would think almost impossible to get out of it. And they got a gas can sitting right next to it. And... 
how many violations do you think we just observed? <clears throat> Probably 15 to 20, Your Honor. Well, we've got Un new uh, structures built without permitting, um, no power to the property, several two or three additional outbuildings, and numerous code violations, perhaps the spooky of which is that flame heater right next to the bedding. So, Your Honor, I don't know if you have it on your computer side or not, but it's in your written uh, report that I just handed to you on page 92 of the report. Constantine Police just did a police search warrant on the property on September 17th of 2024. Uh, they have provided me with a letter that upon our arrival there that Mr. Jelinek is still running a generator. And the house was occupied when they got there for the search warrant. There's a letter from Adam Stark, patrol sergeant, with a concern dated 917. I would also indicate uh, on your written report, I don't know that you have it on your computer version, on page 91 of the report after we did the administrative search warrant, somebody from the Jelinek property decided to put a mannequin out um, flying the middle finger. Um, at this point, I kind of think that that's not only for the neighbor, but that's for me and that's for you because uh, to me, Mr. Jelinek just has a total disregard or concern for any of the rules that we have in the state of Michigan or Constantine Township. Yeah, <laughs> would be page 91 of the report. All right. Um, Mr. Jelinek, that's a pretty dismal uh, review of the evidence here. What's your position? Okay, well, for starters, uh, the two buildings are no longer there. They was, they was built to be sold and they're gone. The ground's clear all around it. The, the heater by the bed, if you look around the room, the headboard is on the other side of the room. For the winter time, the bed goes on the other side of the room. In the summertime, I put it on the other side close to the heaters when the heaters never on. The generators don't run 24 7. How could you afford gasoline for that? Um, the trailers um, that supposedly are unlicensed, you can clearly see the license plate on his pictures. I've got close as close ups of them here. You know, they're all, every, every vehicle there is licensed and legal except for the two that are. The, the 151 Chevy isn't. Well, you don't, it's that's indoors, so you don't need to have it, but it's an in, it's an improper structure. But those structures were the original um, portable garages. They're just in the, in the ordinance. It says so they're, uh, I got to maintain them and keep them straight. So they're reinforced with, with some. They're, um, Yeah, and with the stenching course, the world, I finally got all the parts that I need, and I have an appointment with an uh, electrician coming out. Why has the power company shut off your power? The you know, storm rifted off the side of the house, you know, I was 60 amp, and they, they won't hook up until it's 100 amp. A storm was in April? Yeah, I, I called the power company because the storm ripped the wires off the house. Looks like you need more than a hundred amp. Well, you can't run all those things at once with the extension cord. And that that rule, that thing of wire is for it was for the cable wire for for, for a dish actually. And it's just been removed. Uh, a lot of things have been removed. Ask me to get those. Yes. Some more recent pictures. We eliminated a bunch of extension cord. We have to use extension cord every now and then while we're working on this power. The picture of the piles of trash. That's uh, I, I used to go up underneath the bridge, the new bridge there, and clean up that area underneath there. 
That's, that's, what, that's where that, all that trash come from. Uh, in the yard today, there's, a, there's no trash in the yard. There's nothing on the ground. But the buildings are gone. Well, this building is still there. No, it's gone. That one's it's gone. Yeah, it was portable. How'd you get it out of there? With a trailer. It's taken apart. It's two separate buildings. I, I didn't even build that. I was in Texas visiting my father. I come back and they built me a workshop. That guy with the Indiana license plate that he lives in Indiana. Ross, would you hand these to the pickup truck with the Indiana plates with the fellow that was in there? He re rebuilds old lamps and stuff. He, he, he didn't live there. His driver's license, a license plate. Yes. He hangs out there a lot, works on his little projects. He's the one that actually built the, the buildings while I was in Texas. All right. Um, and they're going. Oh, that's a start. All right, that's the formal hearing. I find that the defendant is responsible for multiple violations at the time the citation was issued. May have rectified some of those, but. Just a minute, let me get the yeah. actual ticket. June 27th, a violation of the International Property Maintenance Code, multiple electrical violations, buildings built without proper permitting, uh, dilapidated buildings, um, numerous other electrical code violations, uh, certainly sufficient. We requested a $500 fine, we'll reserve on that. Now, this isn't my first go around with this piece of property. The other case is a show cause in the old case from 2019. And not very long after I saw you, those children died on this property. And Mr. Klugman was in that building two months before that. Yes, yeah, so you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be stop. This is about as bad as it gets. And uh, I don't have much tolerance for your disregard for the rules that everybody else has to follow. So let's talk about the violation of the compliance order. Uh, Ms. Gushwent, what's the township's position regarding the order to show cause in file 192916? Uh, Your Honor, the township's position is that based on the ruling that the court just had, in addition to all the photos and evidence that were admitted into file 241179ON, I would ask that the court find Mr. Yelnick in both criminal and civil contempt in this matter. Um, from this court's transcript back on December 10th, 2019, this court said, and the main thing is, I don't want anyone living in those substandard houses and dying of carbon monoxide poisonings or burning up in a fire, the junk we can deal with in the spring. Mr. Jelinek's blatant disregard for the orders of this court caused the death of two young children. And that's why we're asking for criminal contempt. Um, I would also ask that the um, all the buildings be required to no, have no human uh, habitation at all until both have received clearance from the building and zoning inspector. Um, I would ask that all of the illegal structures on the property be demolished within 30 days or the uh, township can come on to the property and charge the cost of that demolition to the uh, property taxes. And I would like to request that all litter be removed, um, all vehicles properly stored and licensed and registered or stored properly in uh, 
structures that comply with the building and zoning, building code and zoning ordinances. Let's go back to that compliance order. We had a previous show cause hearing. This is a 2019 case. The hearing was in April of 2021. I entered the compliance order on December 20th of 2019. It is ordered that the defendant shall not bring, install, or place any additional canvas, tarp, metal type structures onto the property unless he obtains approval from Township Zoning Administrator Douglas Kuhlman. It's hereby further ordered that no later than 21 days after the date of this order, the defendant shall repair the existing collapsing tent type structures on the property by ensuring they're upright and completely covered with materials. It is hereby ordered that no person may live in, sleep in, cook, or dwell in any of the tent type structures at any time, nor in a licensed and operable motor home or camper for more than 14 days in the calendar year. It is further ordered that the provisions of the December 20th, 2019 order compliance with the ordinance are retained, which has other conditions. So this was before the children died, correct? Yes, Your Honor. That was April 21 and they burned in? Um, it was April 20th of 2022 was the date of the fire. All right, two things. They want me to find you in criminal contempt means put you in jail for your blatant disregard for my orders and civil contempt, but they want me to order that they simply go in and clean this up within the next 30 days. You mentioned that you had something written that you wanted me to hear, or would you like uh, your partner to read it into the record? It says, I would like to start by saying this, the same families have owned these three properties for 82 years, and there have been no problems till the last several years. Mr. Randy Holmes does not have any reason to complain about anything as there is a neighboring property between ours. It's no secret that Mr. Holmes is the one who complains. It is, if it's not zoning, he calls the police for things such as my brightly colored kayaks are blocking his view of the bridge or because my yard lights are too bright. And Mr. Coleman put in his report, he went to the neighboring property the day after zoning came in to update him on the investigation from the day before. I don't see what business it is of his to be updated. It took them over a week for me to get the information to see what the charges, what the zoning violations were. Um, why am I not allowed privacy? Mr. Holmes come and stands on the property line of mine and the neighbors, not his property line, and just watches what is happening on my property. He is here maybe four days a month. I went to the library and looked at the zoning book and it has been update, hasn't been updated since 2002. So that is no help. I feel like I'm being harassed by zoning as well as Mr. Holmes. Like the pictures they took and said, unlicensed trailer, you can clearly see that there's a plate on it. And the picture, in the picture, um, my kid's rubber pellet gun that says weapon later determined to be plastic. We haven't seen it since the day they came. Um, also around a tree in the fenced in part, I include, I included pictures of my grandfather's tools from when he was here. Uh, who is zoning or anyone to say that they are cast offs? It's not a cast off to me. In previous orders, he stated I needed to maintain the existing buildings, which is what I have done, so they are safe. Also, no one lives in any building on my property, nor have I given anyone permission to stay in any building on my property. And this includes when those children lost their lives. Since zoning brought this up in this matter, that they are so concerned about this property and the children dying here. Well, if they're so concerned, how come no one has talked to the person who started the fire? 
They didn't have permission to be there. And she is the only one who hasn't been talked to. Um, and the photo about the burning trash is stuff that I picked up under the bridge and around that area, which I will no longer do this. It's very clear that zoning doesn't have enough to keep them busy because they're constantly picking at me and my property. Maybe there are other properties that are much worse than mine that you can see. You can't see my property. Um, my property is not a mess and you can hardly see it. Um, there are other properties that are in a, in a bigger mess than mine. And yeah, that's it. All right. And you can't use all those when, when you know all those extension cords don't get used at the same time. Obviously. Um two buildings those vehicles are in are what do you call them? portable Temporary. garages, they're just beefed up, beefed up. Big ones are gone. I can't screen share it. I don't think I have it. Uh, what's the purpose of the mannequin with a head on, given the finger? Yeah, I didn't do that. My son, my son actually did that. Is he the one that he's got sleeping. arrested hiding upstairs in the house? Well, he was sleeping upstairs, and uh, there were no charges. He was, he was released. In Georgia? Yeah. Okay. So is he back? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Is his probation? Uh, I don't understand at all. They took him to jail. He was out within a few hours with no charges. Okay. Um, all right. The evidence under oath in the formal hearing shows continued violation of my compliance order from 2019 and 2021. The defendant. The yard was a mess then. Yes. A lot well, of cleaning up, a lot so of maybe you, you've got 30 days to do some more. You are the least not the least bit contrite about this. If there's a worse property, I can think of one in Flower Field. I'm hard pressed to think of it. Uh, this property is an embarrassment to Constantine Township. It's an embarrassment to St. Joseph County. Two children died here. Not my fault, stop. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know why there weren't any criminal charges. I'm not the prosecutor anymore, so I don't make those calls. And people know more about it than I do. And, um, and then you went right back to the same thing. You put this building up with no permit, uh, whether it was being built to be moved, it sure didn't look like it. Plus you didn't have a permit to do it anyway. And a guy's living in it. He's living in it. There's a sleeping bed, he's cooking chicken or pork chops or something in there. There's no bathrooms, there's no plumbing. There's no electricity. Every room looks like a fire waiting to happen. Uh, like I said, it looks like something from post-apocalyptic movies like Beyond Thunderdome, except they do a better job of hooking this up to batteries. I'm amazed the whole place hasn't burned down. I told you specifically not to have anybody living in those buildings and someone was living in them and they died. I'm not doing this again. Um, I will order everything that the township requested. You got 30 days to clean this up. They're gonna come in and clean it up. They made it to bring the National Guard with them. Uh, no human habitation in any of these buildings. Uh, all illegal structures shall be removed or demolished. All litter shall be removed. All unlicensed vehicles, trailers, other uh, things that required to be licensed shall be 
removed or properly licensed. Um, and no one shall live in any of these buildings effective immediately until there is a code inspected electricity in the buildings. I didn't see pictures of any bathrooms, fortunately. I don't know what they're doing for sanitation for a pump and a septic system, uh, but none of it can be very good. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of property. Your family's owned it for more than 80 years. As you said, it's along the river. It's actually visible from the highway. And in the winter, you can see it. It looks like a homeless encampment. Um, I'm not putting up with it anymore. You got 30 days to do it or the township's going to come in and uh, clean it up and give you the bill and effective immediately. No one's to live in there. You're not living in there with a generator and no water and uh, no electricity. Once you get a proper electrical panel in there, and you can turn it on. It's also starting to get kind of be colder at night. Not having somebody else burn up while I sit here in this chair wondering what happened. So Ms. Gushwent also finds in contempt for the failure to comply with the compliance order. I will find him in civil contempt and allow the relief that you've asked it for. As Mr. Kuhlman said, I think this was ultimately meant for me as the per person who was responsible for enforcing the township zoning requirements and the International Business Building Code from the state of Michigan. I guess that's your right to free speech. You can leave it up there if you wish. Doesn't impress me much and doesn't help your cause. So you don't make the rules um, and you're prior disregard of them cost two children their lives. So Ms. Gushman, you may submit the order under the seven day rule, but effective immediately, no one's to live in there. You got 30 days to start to clean it up. You actually have 21 days to appeal this. So they can't take any action for more than 21 days, but you've got 30 days. Um, to bring the property into compliance with the 2019 and the 2022 compliance orders. And I'm going to ask one question. Yes. Um, so can uh, Mr. Coleman and police officers access the property out the, at any time or just at the 30 day mark? Uh, they can access it to make sure no one's living in there. And if they find somebody living in there, may they be arrested immediately? Yes, for criminal contempt. Thank you. No one's burning up this time. Uh, so it's a heavy burden on you, Mr. Jelinek, but you've gone downhill from when we were last here. And you've got marginal explanations for some of this and no contrition. You're just now to your credit, since June, you have cleaned a bunch of stuff up. So those buildings are gone, but I says, you're still living in your house with no electricity. It's condemned. You're gonna fix your electricity or- We're not living there full time. Well, you won't live there at all. Hang out there when we're working on- Well, you're allowed to do that. You have to go back there to work mm -hmm. on it, not to sleep in it. All right, we'll be in recess. Thank you.